How's everyone doing? My name is Moore Magnetic. I uh, just wanted to do a little autobiography to kind of tell y'all who I am and what I'm about, what I do, and where I come from. These are important things. People will not just accept information from people who are just random people. You have to have a background. Hopefully it's a black background. You know, you have to have done some things. Because if you're talking, and hopefully you're talking about something you've done. Not just what you think about, but what you thought about. Something you've been through and got through. And how you got through it. You see what I'm saying? So, I'm from Seattle, Washington. Yeah, this is the place, the home of the second Black Panther Party that was established outside of California. You know what I'm saying? Now, we know that the Black Panther Party began in Lowe's County, Alabama. And snake went down there and they came up with the concept of the Black Panther, okay, because black people wanted to get their voting rights. Then the, it flew from there to Oakland, Bobby Seale, Huey P. Newton jumped it off, okay, then the brothers from Seattle, Aaron Dixon and his brothers, drove down and got their charter and drove it back up here. So to tell you a little bit about this chapter, you can read this book. It's called Underground, okay. It's another book by Aaron Dixon it's called My People Are Rising. All right? People think Seattle was an all-white place. That's what you might think. Think that if you like. Most people don't know that Washington State was founded by a black man, George Washington Bush. So black people have been here since the beginning. You know? And we ain't really going nowhere. All right? So this is the legacy that born me, the Black Panther Party in Seattle. You understand? My father was very instrumental in the free breakfast program, you know, so, you know, you say, well, see, I don't have no poverty like that. Well, you know, in a black community, it could be next to the richest white community. doesn't matter how much the white communities make, okay? They keep the black community impoverished in a separate state. So, yeah, we had people that was hungry here, that wasn't eating, you know what I'm saying? Otherwise, the black Panther party wouldn't have been able to flourish here. Those conditions were not present. We had, still have, police terrorism going on here. Just like all the other black communities do. You understand what I'm saying? And the thing that was our immune system that fought against it was the Black Panther Party. These are principles and these are programs. Now, not loud mouth people wearing these different colors and whatnot, saying, talking about all these different issues and whatnot, but not really having a fundamental basis or programs to show and prove how we can get past these issues. Now, bigger than that, deal with problem, solution, okay? Huey P. Newton said that power is the ability to see a phenomenon, recognize it, define it, to make it move in a desired direction, right? We have a lot of phenomena going throughout our community that we need to move in our desired direction, okay? So that as we watch through this series, the RBG, the red, the black, the green, the revolutionary black government, you know? We're gonna go through these principles, the, the principles of revolutionary culture that we call the 10 point program, right? That we call the Green Book of Libya, that we call the principles and practices and programs that went down to Cuba, that brought Cuba to where it is. These are all real things. What Asada Shakur, Matula Shakur brought us to BLA, you know, the military wing of the BPP. We're going to go through this. What is it that made these people successful? It wasn't talking, my brother. You talk after you've done something, to explain what you've done, to bring clarity and sincerity to what you're doing. And what I see today, the only reason why I'm really talking while I'm on here, I'm not a big talker, man. I'd rather work than talk. I'd rather build physically homes, houses, communities to be on here talking, you know? But what I see is a lot of false ideas and concepts being attributed to the subject of black power, to the 10-point program. This is a legacy that my family not just lived through yesterday, but lived through today. Still going through it, you know? 
for being involved with this, for being some of the people that jumped this off, for being part of the immune system of the black community. So when I see people coming and trying to attack these principles and trying to weaken them, something that we need right now, something that all of us need, the 10 point program. This is the Bill of Rights for black people in America. This is the Bill of Rights for Africa. This is the Bill of Rights for black people in the Caribbean, for black people all over the planet Earth. We want human rights. We want a higher quality of life. We don't want a whole bunch of big mouth leaders rolling in limousines and whatnot with big glass smiles smiling at us. That's not helping me. I'm talking about the thoroughbred revolutionaries, people that set up programs and principles that brought forth schools, businesses, supermarkets. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, one of the most thorough black businessmen ever that I've ever witnessed. This is what we need today. Some statesmen, some programs that are based upon principles. What principles? the principles of revolutionary culture that we see all throughout the human family in many different places. We gotta pull this together. Pull it all together, pull all the best ideas. Take Asias' ideas from Eritrea. Take Mugabe's ideas from Zimbabwe. Take Nkuma's ideas from Ghana. Take the BLA's ideas, pull that in. Take the Black Panther Party's ideas, principles, and programs. Take France Fanon's ideas in his psychology, take Dr. Bobby Wright's psychologies and ideas and put it down. And when you put it all together, you have a very well balanced, a very well balanced body of information that's not one dimensional. One thing we're gonna kill with the RBG is the one dimensional concept that the black man can be one dimensional. The black man was never one dimensional. He was always spiritual, always intellectual, left brain and right brain always physical, stayed in good shape, could do music, could do mathematics, understood science, understood art, and used science and art to bring together the left brain and the right brain, so that you use art to, to remain creative when you're in politics, to have a creative approach to it, but at the same time when you're doing art, you want to be able to put information into it so that it infuses into the subconscious mind. We're not one dimensional. We never was one dimensional. When you look at the Black Panther Party, you saw artists, you saw musicians, you saw politicians, you saw doctors, you saw it all, you saw a real nation. Real black people do real black things for real reasons. You understand? So as we go through this RBG, this series, looking at the most honorable Marcus Garvey, looking at the honorable Elijah Muhammad, looking at our thoroughbred, the Black Shining Prince, Malcolm X, and the people that he born, the Black Panther Party, okay? As we look at Allah the Father, the man who brought us one of the most powerful revolutionary coaches in the world, right here, 120, okay? A nation that spawns all over this planet. As we begin to look at Nkrumah and Sekou Ture over on the continent of Africa, look at Kassan the Overture. We're gonna go into all of this, brothers and sisters, and take the best parts and the best pieces to create our thesis. You heard me? That's who I am. More magnetic. Peace to the gods. Peace to the earths. Peace to all the righteous people across the planet Earth. Peace to the five percent who teach freedom, justice, and equality to all the human families of the planet Earth. 